We're going to show you how to assemble the new MX2301 data logger, which is the Bluetooth temperature and relative humidity logger, into an RS1 solar radiation shield using the optional MX2300 RS bracket. This would be the same procedure uh, to go into the, um, the smart sensor version or the, the weather station version of the RS1, which is the uh, M-RSA. So let's unpack our products here and we can see what needs to be done. So first, this is our data logger, the MX2301. Again, it's a Bluetooth enabled device. Inside the package, we get a, uh, a package with a couple of um, zip ties and some screws in case you want to mount this thing to a post or to a tripod. Here's the data logger itself. You also get a quick start guide that talks you through how to uh, communicate with the device. Basically, you need to download the uh, Hobo Mobile app from the App Store, the Apple App Store. This will be available for um, Android moving forward, but right now it's just uh, for iOS devices, so iPads or iPhones. So you want to read through this manual to uh, be familiar with how to load that app. And it's pretty straightforward, just like any of our other devices. This is a statement of FCC compliance here for all of our Bluetooth-enabled devices. I'm going to put this aside. So the logger comes with the battery already installed. So all you have to do when you load the, the app is just press this button, and it'll it's a, a find me. Uh, or pick me first, we call it, and it will rise to the top of your list of, can, of available loggers in the uh, loggers uh, screen. And we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Here's our bracket. Um, it's designed to interface with the bottom plate of the RS1. We're going to take that apart in a minute. So the way this gets mounted in, you mount this device on the bracket, and then you mount the bracket inside of the radiation shield. You notice that the bracket has some there's a, some um, spacers here, there's some semicircular pieces in this molding. That goes down, that, that goes towards the radiation shield. So actually it will be going up once it's loaded in there, but um, the logger goes on the flat side. And again, that's explained in this manual. A little one page piece that comes with the bracket. You want to just take a look at it. But basically, there's eight screws here, and you have four for the mounting the logger and four for mounting the bracket. So, you want to put a washer on one of the screws. You use the washers to hold on the screws, um, the washers go on the screws that hold the logger to the bracket. These are self-tapping. So you just want to line those up and screw them in using a Phillips screwdriver. We have our data logger mounted on our bracket and now we want to put this in the radiation shield. We did just a, a, a rough fit assembly on the radiation shield. This is how the top goes on. Again, there's many, uh, several different ways of mounting this device, this radiation shield. Uh, so have a look at the instructions and see which is the best way to mount it for your application. However, all mounting configurations include having the logger mounted to the first plate below the cover. <clears throat> so we take that off, flip it around, and there's our are four standoffs. You notice that they're offset from center, so you want to make sure that you're putting the logger in so it's centered, like so. You could mount it this way, but then you can see it's, it's off center and it won't assemble correctly. So you want to make sure 
that it is assembled this way. Once it's screwed in, this will get mounted in this uh, concave area in the radiation shield, like so, and then you put the top on it. So in, uh, the Bluetooth technology, I'm just going to set this here for now just so you can see it, but the Bluetooth technology is great because you don't have to disassemble the radiation shield in order to communicate with the data logger. However, keep in mind there is a push button on here that has several different functions. Um, for example, you can configure the logger for a push button start. So if you do that in the app, you will have to have access to it. This will have to be disassembled in order for you to push that button. Also, there's a, a power saving mode that you can utilize in the Hobo Mobile app that will extend your battery life. Typically, your battery life at a one minute or longer logging interval is going to be two years. Uh, for outdoor temp and relative humidity, logging, I, don't, I really don't see a need for logging faster than a minute. In fact, a minute is probably way too fast as well. One of the mistakes that folks make when they get a new data logger, they want to record data very, very quickly, and then they end up with very, very large data sets that really they didn't necessarily need. So uh, outdoor weather doesn't really change that quickly. This is an outdoor um, a logger that's designed to be used outdoors. So 10 minutes, 15 minute logging interval, something like that should be fine. Your battery will last you two years easily. If you use power saving mode, the battery is designed to last for five years with a one minute or longer logging interval. However, you have to get into this radiation shield in order to make the logger discoverable. In other words, you have to push the button in order for it to be seen by the app on your device or your, smart, uh, your tablet or your smartphone. So keep that in mind when you're configuring the logger that if you're going to use a mode, a uh, push button start mode or some other kind of mode where you need access to the push button, you're going to have to disassemble this.